أناجي الحق في ليل لهي من أصدق النجوى وأدعو الله من قلب سليم يطلب التقوى أناجي الحق في ليل لهي من أصدق النجوى وأدعو الله من قلب سليم يطلب التقوى Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban bikum. And welcome to Perspective. I am Faisal Patel. The elections are just seven days away. On Sunday, we celebrated Freedom Day, 20 years of democracy. On Perspective, over the past few weeks, we featured political analysts and we featured some small political parties who are also trying and garnering for the vote. One of those that we featured a, a couple of weeks ago was the Patriotic Alliance with Kenny Kunene and Zarif Minti. And today in studio, we have another small political party, the United Democratic Movement. And to represent that political party, we have Qasem Noor Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and jazakallah for having me here. Now you're welcome to interact with me by sending me a mail on faisal at itvnetworks.tv or drop me a tweet on at faisy143. Also I want to know what 20 years of freedom that we celebrated on Sunday, where were you 20 years ago? Do you remember the first vote that you cast in a free democratic South Africa after the advent of apartheid? You can drop me a tweet or a mail on that one as well. It will be nice to know and I will read some of those tweets out in a future program of Perspective. Now, Kesem, tell us a little more about yourself and what do you do for the UDM. Okay, uh, can I start off telling you a bit more about myself? Yes. My name is Kasim Nur Mohammed. I'm 37 years old. I've, uh, I'm a stockbroker by profession, and I do. I sit on a lot of charitable boards. I do quite a bit of charity work, and um, I've joined the UDM recently because. Um, I like the clean record. Yes. Okay, now we have just seven days left for South Africa's fifth democratic elections. How was the election trail of the UDM? How did it go? You mean the campaigning? Yes. It went, alhamdulillah, very well. Wherever we went, wherever we were campaigning, we were well received. People weren't hostile towards us and people welcomed us. So, alhamdulillah, uh, the campaign trail went very well. Did you get a lot of support? And from what communities or from where did you get your support? Uh, we were campaigning all over, so wherever we went, there was a show of support, and uh, I would say the support was broad-based mm. uh, along all along all racial lines. Okay. Now, Panto Olamisa says mine workers on the Rustenburg Platinum mines in the northwest should not be not abandon their strike. Do you think this is wise, considering that it's uh, denting the economy and costing billions of rents? I think it's wise because. It depends which economy we're talking about. The economy that affects the conglomerates and the multinationals or the economy that affects the men on the street. Because uh, it, it can't carry on where company CEOs and company bosses are earning up to 100 to 150 times more than the lowest paid employee. I was reading yesterday a, a report where certain CEOs are earning between 55 and 65,000 a day. Mm -hmm. And here the miners are just asking for 12,500 and I think they should carry on their strike because it's the only way that uh, they can get what they want. Otherwise, 20 years we're in a democracy and the lives of the masses and the working class haven't really, haven't really, uh, what I can say, haven't really um, improved compared to that of the multinationals where you see, we're saying, they say the economy is, uh, is thriving, but is it the is it the men on the street or is it just the multinationals getting richer and richer and richer? So I think that I think I agree with Mr. Olomisa that the strike should carry on. Okay, now what if the mines can't afford? I mean, 12,500 rand, they have proposed a new offer, 12,500 rand by 2017. Um, you know, that's more reasonable. Um, what do you think about that? No, I say the miners should carry on striking. They can afford to pay a CEO 50 million and 60 million a year, they can afford to pay top management millions of rents, but what about the guys that are actually bringing in the money, the, the miners that are risking their lives? I think they should carry on striking. Do you think it's possible that uh, if there is a negotiation in place that uh, we will able to recoup the money that's being lost at the moment with a 13-week strike? 
I think it will be up to recoup the money, but money lost from whose side? Money lost from the miners' side or from the conglomerate side? Because for a conglomerate, they can just write it off as a tax write-off. So they got a lot of ways to kill a cat. Yes. But the real people that are suffering are the, are, are the miners down at the bottom. Okay. Now the UDM, together with various other political parties, have called for Penzit Lakula to step down after Tuli Maroncela had a report on a, on a leasing scandal. Do you suspect there will be irregularities if she stays in a position? The smaller political parties have asked us to step down because of the leasing scandal. Whether there are going to be irregular irregularities or not, Allah knows best. Mm. But uh, I think in fairness, she can step down because of the doubt cast at the moment and mm. put somebody else in a place. She has gone on record on Monday saying that, uh, that the Electoral Act or the conditions or regulations allow for an IEC official to have a business outside of being employed by the IEC. Uh, so why would uh, various political parties go ahead and say she must step down if there is a rule that allows you to have a business as, as an I think maybe they will be 100% certain. They don't have uh, doubts in their mind and I don't see anything wrong with it. I think... Um What's wrong if he just steps down and lets somebody else, just so that everybody's doubts are cleared? Do you think it's wise that to step down so close to an election? We've got less than, we've got about seven days to go. And uh, the elections, well, it's one of the biggest elections since 1994. It's the fifth democratic elections. Do you think it's so uh, wise to step down at so close to the elections? But if she steps down, there is a team that can replace us. So that's why the IEC is not a one-man show. Okay. But as far as irregularities are concerned, if there is a team that will monitor the elections, does it really make a difference whether she steps down or not? I think if the smaller political parties are calling for the head because they're insecure, I mean, if you got a firm and you're running a company and you, you're insecure about your CEO, yes. rather let him vacate the post. Okay. Or him or her. Yes. Now, Bantu Olamisa has disclosed the donors, to the, uh, the donors of the UDM. Um, you want to disclose the uh, donors to our viewers? Uh, Bantu Alomisa, see, I'm not part of the finance committee of the UDM, but from what I know, I can I know of two names. I was at the debate last week, at the UDM debate, where Bantu Alomisa disclosed the names of the donors, and it was the greatest of pleasure. I heard it. I heard two names: Standard Bank and MTN. Mm. That's what I know. There they are more, but I don't know of the others. But I know Standard Bank and MTN. Okay. Um, this is what I heard from Mr. Alomisa last week at the debate. All right. Now, the biggest fear Born Freeze has uh, is about South Africa is whether they will find a job. What is the UDM's policy on job creation? The UDM's policy is on job creation. The primary, primary, primary thing is to eradicate corruption and incompetency. Mm. Because by we as a UDM believe that corruption and incompetency diminishes the gains of our freedom. Okay. By eradicating corruption and, in, in, and incompetency, I think it, takes the, it automatically takes the economy on a different level. There's, there's, there's cleanliness and um, that, could be, that is one of the ways of job creation. Okay, but I'm speaking specifically about job creation. The DA has promised 6 million jobs. The ANC, 5 million jobs. The DA says they have a plan that is tested, that they will create 6 million permanent jobs. What plan has a UDM got in place to create jobs? You mean as a job creation policy? Yes. No, I'm not, I'm not too intrig intrigued on the economic side of the UDM, on the okay. job creation policy. I don't know. You, know, you don't know the, uh, on whether the job policy? I'm not sure on the job policy. Okay. Now, the biggest, like I said, uh, the, the job creation remains South Africa's biggest issue. There are currently almost uh, more than, I think, uh, 2 million or 3 million people that's unemployed. I stand corrected in that one. But, is, I mean, you sh surely you should be aware of a job policy? Or is there a job policy that UDM has that you're not aware of? In UDM, of course, has a job policy, but I'm not aware of the, ex of the final details of the job policy. All right. Now, one of the issues that remains very close to our viewers' heart and a lot of Muslim people is the Palestinian issue. What is the official stance of the UDM on the Palestinian issue? The official stance of the UDM on the Palestinian issue is that the United Nations regulations must be followed. When you say it must be followed, can you expand the on that? Palestinians must be given their right to freedom. Because at the moment, Palestine is in, is in a, an apartheid state. Yes. 
they are being they are they are suffering like how we suffered under apartheid mm. they should be allowed to be free and the world is turning a blind eye on them okay as in, in 30 seconds is the udm uh, will it classified is its official standard israel is an apartheid state Israel is an apartheid state, yes. Are you saying that in your personal capacity? I'm saying that in my personal capacity. I haven't gone on the policy and read specifically Israel is an apartheid state, but I'm a representative of a UDM. Mm. I'm a Muslim face in the UDM. And I, for my personal capacity, I say Israel is an apartheid state. Okay, hold that thought. We're going to come back to that. We're going to go for a break. We're speaking to Qasem Noor Mohammed. He's from the UDM. Uh, we'll be right back after the short break. Stay tuned. أصدق النجوى وأدعو الله من قلب سليم يطلب التقوى إلهي صرت في ظرف عصيب فاكشف البنوى فيا Welcome back to Perspective. This evening we're speaking to Qasem Noor Mohammed. He is from the UDM. And one of the issues or a couple of the issues that we are tackling tonight is the jobs policy of the UDM and also the Palestinian issue. We were discussing that before the break. Now, Qasem, again, I want to go back to the jobs policy. And I know I've expounded on it before the break. You say you're not aware of the jobs policy. Anybody that can give us an inclination of what the UDM's jobs policy is? Uh, you mean anybody from the party? Yes. Yes, I can get a spokesman from the party to contact you, somebody who's in to, who deals with the economic policies of the All union. Right. Now, before the break, also, once again, we were talking about the Palestinian issue. All right, the Palestinian issue, what I'm saying is, besides your personal affiliations on the Palestinian issue, what is the official stance of the UDM on the Palestinian issue? Will they... Uh, the other political parties don't want to take a stance on a Palestinian issue. One particular party is, a, is the DA. In their personal capacity, we spoke to Yusuf Kessen from the DA Youth League. And in his personal capacity, he says that he recognizes, he personally recognizes Israel as an apartheid state. But the DA hasn't gone as far as to, to recognize Israel as an apartheid state. UDM, not your personal capacity, UDM, does it recognize Israel as an apartheid state? I haven't read anything on our policy documents that saying Israel is an apartheid state. But I, in my personal capacity, regard Israel as an apartheid state. Okay. In, in, in talks that you had before, uh, was Israel discussed on, as an apartheid state or as, as, as a persecutor of, or, or as, as a tormentor of the Palestinian people within the party? Yes, of course. And what does your manifesto say about, about foreign policy with regards to the Middle East crisis specifically? Uh, or any, any foreign policy, whether it's the Central African Republic, Sudan, um, let's take Palestinian again, what is the foreign policy of the UDM the on the manifesto? The foreign policy is that the United Nations uh, resolutions must be followed. Okay. Now, you guys are a small party. Yes. All right. Uh, uh, according to recent stats that you are about to get about 1% of the vote. Uh, this is according to a survey that was done. Would the UDM consider coalitions with other parties? I don't know if the UDM would, coali would, would um, consider coalitions with other parties. I suppose after May 7, the whole ballgame changes. Depends how the party has done in the election, how the other smaller parties have done in the election. And provided everybody's thinking line is along the same pattern, then obviously if people are thinking in one pattern and got the same policies, and uh, then probably they could sit down and talk. But at this stage, there's nothing that I know of, or there's nothing that's on the cards. Okay. Helen Zeller said that uh, a, a vote for a small party is a wasted vote. What's your comments on that? Uh, I say she doesn't know what she's talking because any opposition is credible opposition, be it small, be it large. Mm -hmm. It's not the quantity of the opposition, it's the quality of the opposition. I mean, the UDM, uh, they were one of the smaller parties that led this whole IEC, um, what, Penzik, um, Klakula. Klakula. And uh, it's the smaller parties that make the difference because the big parties are too much at loggerheads with one another. It's the smaller parties that come out from the back and... Okay. Do you think uh, that possible that if you form a coalition with a bigger party, say the EFF, or let's use another party, not EFF, say with the DA, you might have a better chance of, of, of being more successful as, as opposed to a smaller party? But then what's it? Selling your success at a price, uh, going 
with DA's policies, going with DA's thinking, you, be, you just become a small fish in a big, in the sea. All right, tell me, at the, at the time of going to, uh, to, to production, how much members does the UDM have at the moment? Uh, I'm not sure on the membership base of the UDM. All right. With key economic policies being the key issue in these elections, how different is your economic policy? And I'm not speaking about jobs. I'm talking about economic policy compared to the ANC, to the DA, to the EFF. Your economic policy? I think our economic policies are along the same line. Only thing is that we sh want to be clear that corruption and incompetency won't be tolerated. All right. In Kandla. What's the UDM stance on Kandla? Obviously, we've seen the scandals. Uh, on Monday, the whole uh, ad hoc committee was dissolved by the ANC using the majority vote with the IFP. What's the UDM's uh, sort of comment on Nkandla? The UDM's sort on Nkandla is that the public protector must be taken to head. The public protector's report mustn't go into thin air. The public protector must be taken seriously. What she's saying, she made some quite serious remarks there that public money was must use there mm -hmm. and that those things should be brought to book. Has uh, Mr. Olomisa engaged uh, President Jacob Zuma on the Nkanda issue? I don't know if they've engaged one another personally. What about uh, ETOLs in Gauteng? What is the, the UDM's uh, stance on ETOLs? Uh, the UDM's stance on ETOLs is how much more are we going to burden the consumer? Mm -hmm. High petrol prices, ETOLs, cost of living going up, I think ETOL should be abolished. Okay. ETOL's being abolished. Again, ETOL's got to do with the economic policy. In your manifesto, what is your economic policy with regards to easing the burden that South Africans have at the moment? It's job creation. Okay, you're saying job creation. Yes. Does the UDM say how much jobs they're going to create? They've got a policy on job creation, but I don't know the whole manifesto of the UDM. Uh, they've, um, there's a job creation policy, there's an anti-corruption policy, there's a, a good governance policy. There's a lot of policies to grow the economy and uh, create jobs also. Okay. Now, Mbazima Shilawa has joined your party and many other people have left Coke to join the UDM. What can you offer those people? with regards to the throng of people coming from various parties, from COPE specifically to the UDM. What can you offer them to say, you know what, listen, stay with the UDM, we we the better party or the best party out of all that's out there? If you see our record or if you see Mr. Olomisa's record, he's Mr. Clean. We've got, uh, there's no corruption, we're not tainted, we're a party that, that is focusing on, um, on basically growing and being the future of South Africa. All right. So with us, you'll get a you basically, it's a good home. What are your expectations for the upcoming elections? It's hard to say because wherever we've been going, we've been well received. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been no hostility towards us. And with this vote no campaign, mm -hmm. it could increase our our percentages. Okay. To give you an exact percentage would be hard at this stage. All right. Now, on the vote co campaign, Ronnie Kessels, uh, the former security minister, has said, or former intelligence minister, has said that uh, initially that... Uh, you must spoil your ballot. And uh, now he's going on and saying that you must vote for a smaller party. Your comments on that? I say that's, that campaign is targeted at ANC supporters. So it's an internal rift in their camp. Mm -hmm. And it got nothing to do with us. But I think that campaign, the specific vote no campaign, is targeted at ANC supporters. Okay. Which constituencies are you targeting at the moment? Me, myself. Well, the UDM. Uh, it's broad-based. When you say broad-based? Broad-based, anybody. Everybody. Uh, the stronghold of the UDM is the Eastern Cape, mm -hmm. but uh, our constituencies are broad based. All right. Um, another question that always comes to mind I mean, if you could sort of woo the, the voters, there's a lot of a million sort of uh, born freeze that were born uh, just after democracy or born uh, uh, on the first elections. There are a million of them um, have registered or they're undecided. How do you convince people to come to the polls? Uh, come to the polls and vote for us or come to the polls? Well, just vote? come to the polls for the time being. Come to the polls and vote. It's, it's, it's the duty to come to the polls and, write and vote because by not voting is you don't care. Mm -hmm. And then you got no right to complain after that if something goes wrong because you never, you're, you're taking a back seat. Uh, you're not making a difference. It's your democratic right to vote. A lot of people have given their lives for this. 
uh, it's a struggle that has been gone on for years. So it's it's fair for them to respect the struggle. It don't mean they were born free. They should just abandon this. They should vote. It's their right, and it's their cho it's their right, and it's their duty. I feel. Mm, okay. What so many. Parties, 129 parties in total that have registered for the national elections. Uh, who do you see as your main opposition? You mean on the bigger scale or the... Well, generally. Generally, the two big parties. Are you competing with the ANC and the DA? I think we're, bit, we're too small to take them on, but uh, the ANC and the DA should get the bulk of the vote. All right. And then uh, percentage-wise, I mean... Uh, have you got any indication from your party that uh, the amount of people that will turn out to the poll, unregistered voters, registered voters? No, but I've been reading surveys, so it looks like 50 to 60 percent registered voters. Okay. I want to come again and I want to reiterate uh, just before we got, we got like two minutes left um, on, this, on the issue of job creation, because that is the most important thing at the moment. It is plaguing South Africa. If you had to devise a plan for job creation, I know you're not aware of what's in your manifesto, but if you had to devise a plan for job creation in South Africa, in 30 seconds, what would that be? It would have been, uh, you mean, uh, as a party plan? Yes. It would be a job plan where minimum wages are adhered to and where people are given the technical know-how of creating, of, of, it's like giving not giving somebody, making a beggar their whole life, giving them the skills mm -hmm. and um, giving them the skills to empower themselves. All right. In 30 seconds, why should uh, viewers or the people of South Africa vote for UDM? Because it's a clean party. Uh, our leader's record is clean. And uh, our party is always at the forefront of tackling and fighting corruption and ensuring a, f a better and safer South Africa. And our policy is also that corruption and incompetency diminishes the gains of our freedom. All right. Kassam, it's an absolute pleasure having you on Perspective and all the best for the elections. Alhamdulillah and Jazakallah for having me on board. Okay. That was Kassam Nur Mohammed. He's from the United Democratic Movement. And, uh, you know, he's got a lot of issues that uh, we discussed this evening. Um, he's not aware of the, the policies of uh, the economic policy or the job creation policy of the UDM, but we will keep in touch with him and then bring that to you as soon as we have it. Or maybe we can even check it on their website. Unfortunately, we've come to the end of another edition of Perspective. Join me again next week as we bring you another episode of Perspective on ITV. From myself, Faisal Patel, and the great team here at ITV, Fi Amanillah, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. أناج الحق في ليل لهيم أصدق النجوى وأدعو الله من قلب سليم يطلب التقوى أناج الحق في ليل لهيم أصدق النجوى وأدعو الله من قلب سليم يطلب التقوى ظرف عصيب فاكشف البلوى فيا ربي انا عبد لرد الطيب لا يقوى